everyone. It's not unusual for new greyhound owners to comment on their new companion's poop, the size of it, the quantity of it, and how often it's produced. So this video is taking a look at picking up poop and there are a few pictures of poop here. So if you're a bit squeamish, you might wanna look away. Now, pooping frequently and having loose stools can be caused by stress. So it's not surprising that the dog might have a slightly upset tummy when they first move in with you because there's an awful lot of change that's been happening for them recently. And it might be worth having some remedies on hand to help if they are very upset in that department. So you might be doing something as simple as adding eggs to their food, or you could buy an over-the-counter remedy such as Procolin, which will help to firm them up and provide healthy bacteria to settle the gut again. It pays to consider in the longer term what you feed them. Now, if the food has a lot of fiber in it, you're going to get looser poop, same as happens with humans. So you might need to adjust the kibble that you feed so that you get one that suits them better. A kibble with a high wheat content is likely to produce, likely to produce more poop and bigger poops. And people who feed raw often comment that they see smaller poop and less of it. So the nature of the food can be quite important in terms of the end product of that digestive system. Yes. I think for me, the, the biggest shock was you see these dogs and they're so dainty and gracious and gentle, <laughs> and then they produce something the size of a pineapple. It's like <laughs> a big shock, isn't it? <laughs> and more or less the colour of it, yes. or a ripe yeah. pineapple as well. And the one yeah. tip I remember you gave me is move the dog's back legs away from it. Oh yes, like that's yeah. right. Oh yes, yes. Some of them yeah. do. We've, we've had a few oh, do that. Yeah. 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 Turn around, covered everybody. <laughs> Food passes through the dog system quicker than it does through a human system. And it's fair to say that you can have an idea of how soon that food is gonna come out. So the later you feed the dog in the day, the later they're going to need to poop in the evening. If you're having accidents in the middle of the night to clear up in the morning, then you might want to consider feeding their bigger meal earlier in the day and moving their last main meal earlier in the day. It can also be helpful to add in a last walk late at night because walking around is going to make them poop more than just going and standing in the garden. Now, if we're going to be picking up poop, we're going to need something to pick it up with and not all poo bags are the same. So let's have a look at some different poo bags and see how they vary. So I've got a selection of different poop bags here to try out. These two I think are quite interesting. I buy this one regularly. This one is nappy bags and this is the same brand of nappy bags but in a box and 200 instead of 150. And if we look at them we can see that bags are not all the same. So this is the one out of the plastic bag. Nice long bag. Easy to get your hand inside and cover up your wrist to stop poopy accidents. So quite a nice big bag and generally quite reliable, although that's thin. But if we compare that with the one out of the box, you'll see that they're very different. So this is the same make, but out of the box instead of out of the bag. And look at the difference in size. Oops, you see that? So with this one, it's probably a similar thickness but by the time I put my hand in and turned it upside down, there's a lot more chance I'm going to get in a bit of a mess with this. And if we try the structural integrity test, uh-oh, not so good for firm poo on squidgy surfaces like grass. See if I can stick my fingers through one of these. Let's see. Ooh, that one's a bit stronger. Yep, definitely a lot stronger. I'm pulling quite hard and I still haven't managed to get my fingers through. So even bags from the same make can be different. Okay, now you can also buy bags that are intended for doggy poo. These are black, so it looks nicer, but look how small this is. I don't think that's gonna cope very well with a greyhound poo. And again, when I put my hand in, not a lot of protection for my wrist 
Let's try our structural integrity test, shall we, Gandalf? Oh, Jimmy, you're going to help. Um... Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> so I don't give my vote to that one either. Here I've got some bags on a little holder. So this is quite handy. You can clip this onto your lead or your waistband. And there's a roll of bags in here. I find these actually work out dearer because you can't just go to the pound shop. You've got to buy the bags that are on a roll that fit in there. But you've got a nice big bag. No tie handles on this one, but nice and capacious for large poop, such as Gandalf produces. So let's see if we can get my fingers through this one. What do you think? Huh? Huh? What do you think? That one's quite strong. Yeah, definitely that's a strong one. Not getting my fingers through there. So that's that one on a row. He seems to quite like the blue one. I think blue's his favourite colour. And this one, this is a really nice strong bag. This one's biodegradable and lots of length, lots of space for big poops. Let's try and stick my fingers. Do you want my fingers through there, Daisy? Yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah, oh, I'm almost getting my nails through. Yeah, so this one is probably the king or queen of plastic bags for poop. I think this one on the roll probably comes second. But if you want something cheap, I wouldn't say no to those. And to be fair, if they're going to go in a bin in the bag, that's probably not going to biodegrade anyway because the landfill will be anaerobic. So you're not going to be able to get that biodegradable if it goes in your normal waste. So it can defeat the object of buying a biodegradable poo bag if you don't dispose of that bag in the right way. So you're armed with your favourite poo bags. You know they're strong enough. You know they're big enough. They're going to cope with anything that your dog might produce. Let's meet some of the volunteers at Greyhound Trust Hall Green talking about picking up poo for the kennel hounds. No, Them are no, useless. No, 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 no. Especially when you've got long nails. Yeah. That's the worst. Your hands go through there. <laughs> what, what's the best technique, man? Go on, go on. This is What do I do? I do that. I always grab a, yeah, grab a handful of grass or whatever's under yeah. the thickness to make okay. sure you get it all. Then, put your little knot in it. And carry it around with you. Got to make sure it's right up your wrist, the bag. So you don't get any bits. Oh, yeah. And the dog lead. Especially the dog lead. Keep tight hold on that bloody yes. lead. And then there's all different types of poos, aren't there? I'm going to get again. <laughs> <laughs> there's different types of poos, isn't there? There's the sloppy poo. Yeah. Sloppy poo. Which is like soup. And the <laughs> poo, which yeah. you can't get up, which you have to cover up. <laughs> and then there's the stick it together poo, where you can pop it all together and get it yeah, in one hand. But normally, it's a bit sloppy. Yeah, a bit sloppy. <laughs> the first one's usually nice. The second one is loose. <laughs> It's when you get the job. <laughs> I don't like it. So there are definitely different surfaces that are good for picking up poop from. I've had that experience myself. Cut grass is much easier to pick up from than long grass. And I quite like leaves in the autumn or a nice gravelly surface to make it easier to roll the poop off. As soon as you start pressing, then you're going to get into trouble and end up in a mess. And talking about messes, when you're picking up on a walk, always check for distractions for your dog before you bend down. Because if they suddenly decide to do naught to 40 when you're crouching over reaching for that poop, that isn't going to end well. Make sure you don't drop the lead, it's securely round your wrist. So I would put the poo bag onto the other hand. And of course, learn where the nearest bin is because you don't want to have to carry that around too far if you don't have to. If you're out in the countryside, an approved technique is called stick and flick, where you find something to flick that poop into the undergrowth with off the path. But if you're in an urban environment, of course, you will need to pick up after your dog and pop that in the most, the nearest bin you come to that's suitable. So I hope you found that useful and we'll be back again soon with more videos for you. Bye for now. Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.